Editing video can be very difficult. There are a multitude of factors that can make it easier or more difficult for you. One is learning. The software can be difficult depending on what you're using. The cost can definitely be a barrier. And then just some of the other features that you miss out on, like the ability to do collaborative projects with others over the internet and give active feedback and stuff through notes and things directly on those clips in a timeline is features that would be really nice to have. And even the ability to directly publish to YouTube or share with your team um, just all on one platform. And that's really neat idea and concept. And I'm really glad that the sponsor of today's video, Oslo by Streamlabs, has actually made that. And we're gonna take a look at it in just a second. All right, so now we're over at Oslo's website and we're gonna go ahead and log in or get started for free. So let's go ahead and get started. And you can sign up with an email and I'm gonna sign up with ours. We're gonna blur that out. So signing in was a little weird. I guess that's just because it is in a beta state, but by the time I believe this comes out, it's not gonna be for y'all. So that's gonna be great. It's gonna be, you know, a full release and they are going to, I would assume like any other product by Streamlabs be adding features based on your feedback. So be sure to let them know anything that uh, maybe doesn't work the way you think it should or other features that you want to have added to this because Streamlabs is really good about going the extra mile and adding in features that you guys want to see. So let's get started with the editing process. We're actually just going to kind of back out and we are going to go to essentially what would be like our home. So we've got video editing, We've got supporting assets and our videos that we've exported currently. Um, we have a collaboration tab that would let us do requests for files from anyone. Um, and we can review videos and links, it looks like, and we can even chat with our team. So if we have a team of people working on a project, we could do that. You can see that we're currently under demo project and we can add multiple videos inside of that demo project. Um, we do have supporting assets, so upload any files associated with this project. You can upload video, images, audios, and other file types. So let's go ahead and let's add in the files that we want. All right, and the project I'm gonna be using is we're just gonna use something from a TikTok short um, or a YouTube short that we've done in the past, which was on this Just Watch app. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload all the files that we used for that project. It will take it just a second and we're gonna go ahead and get those files up and where they need to be. All right, so you can see that we've got our files uploaded. One thing I want you to pay attention to is in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see that we're using 955 megabytes of 15 gigabytes. So that's roughly one gig of 15 gigabytes. Um, so we could do, if we're doing this, like 15 YouTube shorts with you know, the type of content that I would normally put in those. So that's pretty nice. But let's say you needed more space because you're working on a bigger project and you've got a ton of footage. Well, there's some actual features that you could really benefit from if you do more length style YouTube content or just longer form of videos. And that is their $10 a month subscription plan that includes 250 gigabytes of storage space instead of 15. And you can actually export videos up to an hour in length and upload files that are as big as 20 gigabytes. And you'll be able to export those videos with no watermark and up to 1080p quality. And it's only $10 a month. And it looks like if you switch to annual billing, you're gonna save 20% on that. So that's actually gonna save you quite a bit of money and is a really neat option. Now um, let's go ahead and start the video editing process. So let's click video editing and click create new video and title this video. So I'm gonna name this, uh, let's just name this um, YouTube short because this is what we're going to be working on today and the main reason why is I want to show you the difference in aspect ratios and how you can change those because it's really nice and convenient that you can do that. All right so now that we're in the video editor let's talk about all the different options we have and let me do control shift b there's a nice shortcut to get rid of the uh, bookmark bar because just want to give you guys a little bit more real estate so you can see what's going on. So first off we've got our video playback this is going to essentially show what's going on on the timeline Line. The timeline is going to be down here. We have play, stop, and fast forward and rewind controls. We can toggle canvas snapping for our files and timeline snapping. We can split stuff and redo and undo. And these all seem to have, minus these two, seem to have keyboard shortcuts for them. So that's really nice that we've got keyboard shortcuts for this stuff. We can zoom in and out of the timeline with this, and we can even reset our zoom back to a middle ground whenever maybe we just need to see what's going on and maybe we get too zoomed in or too far zoomed out. 
let's talk about settings. So we've got some basic settings. We've got the ability for landscape, which would be your 16 by nine typical aspect ratio for something like YouTube or just any other traditional video um, streaming platform for the most part. Um, we also have the newer form factors, I guess, or aspect ratios, which are our TikTok and YouTube shorts, which are, um, I guess, nine by 16, which is pretty much the same thing, just flipped this way, right? So think of your TikToks and YouTube shorts. And then we have a square aspect ratio, something that you would expect on Facebook and Instagram. So I'm going to show you why those are important in just a second, because we are actually gonna be doing this as if we were editing a TikTok. If you were doing a YouTube video, all the same stuff's still gonna apply. Your footage may just come in a little bit more, a uh, little bit better whenever you go to import those. We'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. Our media tab is actually gonna show us all the different media that we have and give us information on it. So you can see, we can see the codec that was used, the size of the files, who uploaded that. And it, that's great if you're working in a team. So you can see who was, you know, the person that was responsible for uploading those files, the date that it was added. And we can just click this button to add these to the timeline, or I believe, yeah, we can just drag them down there. Really easy to use. We have them sectioned out by video, audio, and images. So if we had just audio tracks in there or just purely images, um, we would see those separately. So those are really nice for being able to kind of go through your files really neat uh, or really quickly and find what you need. So that's gonna be really helpful. We also have some things for like intros, some audio sounds for intermissions, alerts, and things like that that would be really useful for just say adding some ambience to your videos or just um, something whenever you've got some downtime. We've got a bunch of transitions and text filters and even a comment section that we will get into in a little bit. So uh, another thing to keep in mind too is if you want to at any point in time, we could actually upload more media just by clicking on that upload and finding the files we want to upload. We can export by clicking here and giving it a name, and we can even publish directly to our YouTube channel by checking that box. So you'll wanna sign in with YouTube or link your YouTube account to this, and it'll just immediately upload those straight to your YouTube channel, which is gonna be really neat if you're doing stuff like YouTube Shorts or editing a full length YouTube video inside of this. So now let's go ahead and let's add some clips to the timeline. So I'm gonna add this clip to the timeline, and we can see that there seems to be a problem, right? This clip, while added to the timeline is, um, well, the timeline is 16 by nine and this is nine by 16. So the problem that we actually see here is that there's black bars on both sides. And let's say we don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and delete this clip. And we're gonna go up here and we're gonna click portrait, TikTok and YouTube shorts. Now let's go ahead and add our media in. And there we go. So since this media was recorded specifically for that, we can see that this shows up here just the way we want it. Now, what I'm gonna do is, let's say, I'm not gonna put on my headphones for this because I don't wanna focus too much on editing. I wanna be focused more on teaching you how to use this product. Um, I want to show some cuts. So let's say, it looks like I start talking right around in here. So let's go ahead and drop the timeline right here. And obviously you're gonna wanna be a little bit more specific with your edit. Um, I'm just doing this for teaching you. Um, and now that we've did a cut by clicking this right here, the split, or you can use the keyboard uh, shortcut S. Um, I've cut this off. Let's say we don't want this first part. So we can click on this and we can right click and delete clip. Now we can move the timeline back. So let's just go ahead and move this clip back to the front. So if we start at the very beginning of the timeline, we will see that I start talking into the microphone and it looks like I'm done there. So there we go. Let's cut somewhere around here and we're just gonna hit S to split and we're going to go down to the end of this and let's see where I start talking again. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're working with. Okay, looks like I'm talking again right here. Split, and we're gonna delete that. You could actually use the backspace key to delete. And we're gonna do a split right there as well. Click the end, backspace, there we go. So we now have our intro and our outro that 
I know that's typically how I record. So those are going to be um, all in the same clip. And then now I'm going to go in and I'm going to try to find some filler for like the body of the video. So I'm going to move the playhead back here and then I want to add this in and it adds it in based off where your playhead's at. And then I'm just going to look and look for some just movement because like I said, I'm just going to try to be kind of basic with this and then we're going to go in and start adding in some of our features. So I'm going to cut this down a little bit and we're going to plop those kind of right next to each other. And let's add in that other one as well. So it looks like this one's the one I haven't added in. Let's just go here and do a random split. And here, split, here, split. And like I said, we're not being like super um, critical of the way we're doing this right now. I'm just trying to give you some reference for whenever you go to start working on your own project, right? So there we go. We've got our clips added in. I'm just kind of buttoning those clips up to each other where you can see that plus. It's going to give us the ability to add a transition in, which is really cool. So there we go. We've got all this in and there are a bunch of really nice features and effects that we're going to mess with now that is going to give you a lot of customization whenever you go to use this yourself. So we've got our clips in. And if we just wanted to export like this, this is a good way to cut stuff down and send it out, right? But we want to be a little bit more critical with our video. We want to add in some other stuff, like say we wanted to add in some sound effects. We can go in here and we can add some transition sounds. Um, if we wanted to, we could go down here and then click the plus, and then we could just add this transition sound if we wanted to over that. Um, we can zoom that playhead in and we can see where that transition would be. And we can kind of time that in particular with um, some other stuff. So let, let me show you how that works, right? So we can actually adjust volume. So if you see that it is not loud enough, we can go ahead and turn it all the way up. Or if it's too loud, we can turn it down. We can adjust the track speed if we need it to be a little bit faster. And we can decide to fade this at both the in and out section, which is really cool. So we can fade it in and out. And now that we're done with that, we've got an audio transition. But now let's say we wanted to add a video transition in. So we can add a video transition in. There's actually quite a few really neat ones. Or we can click Add Transition, and then we could pick from this list here. I'm kind of looking at the left hand side because I want to see something that's really neat. Um, I kind of like the directional warp. That looks kind of cool. Where is that at? Directional warp. So let's see. Oh, that's really neat. So yeah, there is a really neat transition that's going to go with that audio. Obviously, you'll want to pick your audio to kind of coincide with that transition, right? But you can see how easy it is to do that. And you're not paying for a video editor. And you can do this on a laptop, a desktop, um, anything that's just able to pretty much open up a browser and run this. I, I'm not sure about mobile phones, but definitely on a um, even a cheap laptop, you'll be able to do this. So now that we've got one transition done, let's go ahead and add a few more in here to finish these off. I'm just gonna drag in a linear blur there. So there we go. And let's do a wipe right. Just kind of see how some of these look. And then let's do let's do color distance on this last one. That looks kind of weird. I don't know that that might be better with different uh, different effects for sure or different video clips. But let's see, there's just quite a few options in here. So definitely go through here and find um, whatever you think looks best for the video you're working on and try it out. So yeah, um, we could obviously do the same thing. Um, we could duplicate this audio if we wanted to use the same audio for transitions just by right clicking and clicking duplicate. And then we could drag those out and then we could have like a whoosh or whatever kind of sound effect that we want to use for audio transitions. We could just grab that and put those anywhere that we're going to have those transitions at. Right there should be good. So we can see the whole timeline. And let's go ahead and look at some of the other effects. So sometimes I'm probably going to want to go ahead and do on say the outro, we might want to do a fade out. 
So we can see at the very end, it's gonna fade out there. So maybe we wanna extend that a little bit. So after I stop talking, we kind of fade out. We can even adjust the volume or the duration of the fade out. So if I wanted the fade out to be a little bit quicker, we could set that to one second and it fades out pretty quick like that. And there's other things that you can do. You can add flicker. We can even adjust the speed of the clips and we can resize things too. So if we wanna zoom things in or if we wanna zoom things out, rotate, um, adjust the size or even do some color correction directly inside of here. We have options for that as well. Now let's go ahead and add some text in. So I like, let's see, righteous is kind of bold. I, I like permanent marker. I am a sucker for permanent marker. So let's see where that's at. That's all the way up here at the top. So let's go ahead and add in permanent marker. And so let's go ahead and type in just watch app so we can do that and we can adjust the font size turn it up go to advanced we can even do a background if we wanted to so like let's say we wanted to do something like that let's say you wanted to use it for like your twitch or something because i know a lot of people stream you can do uh twitch.tv forward slash um i think mine is flux 2d you can just type that in just like that. And if you wanted to, you could add some spaces on the side. So it's kind of centered in the middle of that. And then we could go to advanced and we could fade this in and out. And we'll want to set that to probably about one second. Then go to edit and probably bring the size back down just a little bit so it's not as large can move this around to wherever we want it to be. So let's say we were promoting our live stream, right? We could just add this in right here and it's gonna fade in and out. So let's see, let's go back to the very beginning of the timeline and click play. And if you want to promote your live stream, you can see how easy it would be to do that inside of this. And people could go check out your Twitch and you could do highlights or something inside of here and then upload them to like TikTok or YouTube Shorts. Or if you're just doing a video and you just need to add some text and you could add it in very easily that way. So let's say that you wanted to add filters. Filters are really nice if you're going for a certain style, right? And we have some options there. So we can go with a really moody, saturated feel, dull or black and white. Maybe we had something that happened in our highlight reel that we weren't happy about. Um, we could go with um, a black and white filter. And here's where it gets fun, right? So somebody else could jump in and start working on your project with you. And they could say um, right in here, they could just be like, oh gosh, why is that black and white? Somebody was messing around with filters and they left it. And this clip definitely should not be black and white. Say, hey, this clip probably shouldn't be black and white, right? Send. And now if I was say under a different account and I come through, I can see on the timeline where somebody put a comment and said, hey, this clip probably shouldn't be in black and white, right? And I could go, ah, oh, yeah, you're correct. So let's go in there go to the filters and set it to none, or maybe change it to the filter that we thought we had it set to. You can go in and make those changes like that. Um, you could even go in and click on their timestamp and you can reply just by clicking reply. And you could say, hey, um, I just fixed it. What do you think? And I know there should be a comma right there. No grammar, please. There we go. And they will have a response there that they can see and they can be like, ah, Chad fixed that problem. We're good. And then we can mark it as resolved um, and give them a thumbs up, all that stuff. And there you go. So whenever you're done, you can simply click on export, publish to YouTube and give it a title. And it's going to go straight to your YouTube channel and your viewers are going to be able to see it. So whenever you're done, you could say, hey, I'm done with this. We can click this back arrow 
we can go back to here and we could even work on say different versions of this project. So if we wanted to um, copy the URL and send it out to people, we can do that. We can rename it or we can even start on say a version two or say another section of that video. And then whenever we're done, we've just got multiple different variants and being like, what do you guys think? Do you like the way we shot this video this way or edit it this way? You could just make those changes as needed. So all right guys, it's gonna be all for this video. Big thanks to Oslo by Streamlabs for sponsoring this video and go check it out and let us know in the comment section down below what you guys think of it. Um, yeah, check out one of these videos over here if you wanna watch some more stuff on us, from us, by us. Yes. <laughs>